All right, now we have created a lot of objects. For example, we have created the bicycles, the old rusty robot tank. We have the 3D scans of the persons, including motion capture animation. By the way, the two videos about 3D scanning and motion capture are bonus material, so they are just available in the commercial version of the workshop. Yeah, then we have created the trees and the bushes. We have created the stones and all the different plants, the butterfly and the flies, and also the broken concrete wall. And now we want to put together all of these objects in our main scene. If you can remember, in some of the first videos I showed you how to set up a good structured project folder and also how to manage the files inside these folders. For this video the 3D folder is very important and here I want to talk again about how we saved all our different files and how we can get them now into our main scene. So in our 3D folder we have the 3D subfolders, assets, edit and scenes. In the folder edit we have saved all the different versions of our 3D objects while creating them. The different versions of the objects are simply backups. And if we take for example the tree, the final tree in the final version we saved in our assets folder with a clear name like tree without version 1, 2, 3, etc. So and if we for example want to edit one of our assets, we go back to the edit folder and there we edit the objects and then in the end we save over the existing file inside the assets folder. So there we have always the updated and final version of all our different assets. So that means in our assets folder we have all the final objects, e.g. the trees, the persons, the robot tank or all the stones. And in the folder scenes we have saved our previous file, you know, the rough build up 3D scene. And this scene we will use as foundation for our main scene because here we have the right camera angle and all the different objects already set up. So we simply need to replace all the low detail objects with the high detail objects we have in our assets folder. If you want to import 3D objects from different Blender files into another Blender file, there you have different possibilities. First of all we can use the append method. Basically that means we copy our objects and paste them into the scene. That means we then can edit all the different objects we have pasted in our scene, just like you know it. The problem is that our file size of the scene file will increase very fast if we paste all the different objects because all the data are stored inside the file. So for all the different objects you maybe have to edit inside the scene, certainly you have to use this append method. But for most of the objects we use a different method called linking. In this case we link all the different objects from all the different Blender files we have saved in the assets folder into our main scene. The great thing about that is that our file size of our main scene does not increase very much because all the different objects remain in their original Blend file. So the file size is shared between all those different Blend files. The downside of this method is that you can't edit all the linked objects directly in our main scene. You just can do simple transformations like transformation, rotation and scaling. But anyway this is not a problem because you simply can edit your objects inside the assets folder and if you save the Blend files and then go back to our main scene the edited objects will be updated automatically in our main scene. And this is great because if you save your main scene in different versions, all the different scenes are using the same assets from the assets folder, so if you edit one asset, it will be automatically updated in all the different scenes. So how does this linking work? So at first we navigate to our assets folder and open up our different assets. For example here I have all the different trees in one Blender file. Then I select one of the trees, press Ctrl G to group this object and then you can rename the group down below in the operator panel. And this I do with every single object I want to have as a separate object in my main scene later on. 
That means you can't select all trees and put them into one group because if you link them in you just have one object where all those trees are in and this is not very useful. After you have grouped all the objects, save the file. So here with the trees we have a little problem because they are very high detailed and if we link in such high detailed objects in our scene and duplicate it many times you can't navigate through your scene smoothly anymore. And because of that I switch to the layer with the branches, then I select all of them and then I navigate to object, display, maximum draw type and then while clicking on bounce I hold down the alt key. And I hold down the alt key because of that this setting will be applied on all the selected objects at the same time. And now you can see all the different branches are displayed as wireframe cubes. So you can see on the tree we have all these cubes but if you hit render you will see the real branches. That means in viewport we can navigate quite smoothly and if you render you have your high detailed objects. Okay, after you've grouped all your different objects and saved all the files in the assets folder, you open up your previous file. And now save this file with the name scene version 1. To have a better overview while working here in our scene, I disable all this viewport effects like ambient occlusion or this mist effect. Then I switch to the cycles renderer, enable the solid viewport shading and also disable only render and world background. Also I delete the sun lamp because we don't need it. Okay, now we import the robot. So I switch to the layer with the low poly object. Then I click on file, link, then we navigate to our assets folder. Here I click on the robot file. Then basically we have a few inside of this Blender file. And you can see now we have access to all the different data blocks like materials, lamps, world settings and so on. And that means we can link all those information into our scene. But in this case we just need the group library. So we click on that. And in the robot assets file I have grouped all the different parts of the robot into one group. And if I double click on that group it will be linked into our scene. So and the linked robot I place on the position of the low poly robot and after that I can delete the low poly one. So because we didn't have done that before we will adjust the ground of the scene. So this plane I subdivide in edit mode using W and here in the tool shelf I enable dynamic topology. So if we sculpt on the object it will automatically add details where we sculpt according to a value we can adjust here in the tool shelf. So that means we can create a very high detailed ground without having to subdivide the object in edit mode too much. Here I enable constant details. That means if we are sculpting all the details which will be added or deleted have always the same size no matter how close or far away you are with your current view. Because if you choose relative details the detail size which will be added depends on how far away or how close you are to the object. Also I disable the x-axis for symmetry lock mirror so that the things we are sculpting here won't be mirrored to the other side. So now we can sculpt onto the plane and you see even our plane wasn't highly subdivided we can add much details here. So now I sculpt a little null under the robot and also sculpt around the robot where the different parts are hitting the ground. So if you're sculpting and the resolution is too low you can decrease the detail size value and the lower the value the higher the details which will be added while sculpting. So but here's the best workflow to start with very low details, sculpt the main parts and then go more and more into detail. So decrease the detail size over the time step by step. Yeah, and this is a very creative process, so just shape the ground how you like it. Here's a small tip to make the sculpting process even better. Press N and here under shading enable matcaps. And then you have enabled a global material that will be placed on all the objects. And this material basically has a kind of lighting stored in it. And with this you can see all the different shapes of what you're sculpting even better. 
Also, I would recommend to enable viewport ambient occlusion. With that, you have shadows on all the edges or where two objects are placed close together. And with this, you also can see the different shapes even better. Yeah, and with these two options, sculpting is much more fun. I don't finish the ground sculpting for now because we want to add some more objects to our scene and then we can sculpt according to all the objects which are on the ground, like the stones or the trees, etc. So that means the sculpting of the ground happens all the time, step by step, while adding all the objects. So now we add the trees using the same way we used for the robot. And you can see when I navigate to the group folder inside my blend file, I have a lot of different groups, one for each individual tree or bush. Yeah, I know we are all lazy people, so we don't want to import them one after another. So I simply press A to select them all and then click on link from library. And then you can see we have linked all the different trees at once. Now I select all the trees, press M and move them to another empty layer, just for a better overview. So important to know if you link in some objects which are using, for example, a particle system. And in this case, a particle system uses the different branches to place them on the tree. And all those objects the particle system is using will also be linked into our scene. This also happens for the empty object, which we have used for animating the displace modifier for the leaves. These objects I select and move them to the very wide 3D layer on the lower level. And this layer we will use for all the temporary objects we don't need to see in our final scene, but we need them so that everything is working. Now I enable the floor and the robot and then I can move the trees to the side. Also the two bushes I move to another empty layer, so I can edit the trees and the bushes separately. All the low poly temporary trees I delete now. And now I switch to the camera view and now I can move all the different trees. And to move the trees so that they are sticking to the ground, we can use different tricks. One way could be to press G for translation and then use Shift Z. That means you can move them on the Y and the X axis and the Z axis will be excluded for transformation. Another way would be to lock the Z axis up here in the properties menu. Then also you just can move the selected tree on the X and Y axis. The third method would be to enable snapping and for snap element we choose face. That means if you move an object, it will stick to the objects which are lying under it. But this also means if you move the tree above the robot tank, it also will stick on the surface of the robot. And then we have a tree growing on the tank. So and now I can simply move all the different trees according to my camera view. And the great thing about the trees is that we already have simulated them in the assets files. So the simulation also shows up here in our main scene on the linked objects. And so we don't have to simulate every single tree again here. This saves a lot of time. So in case you have deleted one tree so that the tree doesn't show up in the scene anymore, you don't have to link it in again because if you press Shift A, you find the category Group Instance. And here you have listed all the linked objects. So you simply can click on one object of the list and it will be added to your scene again. You can see, for example, one of those trees or even the robot tank I can insert again. So here I skipped a short part of the creation process. What happens to all the other objects I show you soon, because here I want to show you something with the trees. So here you can see all the trees I've added to my scene. And also you can see I have added some trees behind the camera and also on the sides, on places, which actually you can't see in the final scene. But the important part, the trees are influencing the lighting. That means, for example, here in the foreground, the scene would be lit very bright without the trees. And with the trees, you can see we have the dark shadows in the foreground. 
Yeah, and because of that, I have added all the trees on the sides and behind the camera. So they cast shadow into our scene, so the whole scene looks more realistic. So in some cases, you can add objects you maybe not directly see in your final rendering. Here you can see the final ground. I've split this up into three parts, the foreground, the midground and the background. And the three different parts have different detail levels. The foreground is very detailed, the midground less detailed and the background has nearly no details. And because you just see the foreground near the camera, this detail level is absolutely fine. Also to increase the details for the foreground and the midground, I have added a displace modifier using a clouds texture. So you have additional details all over the ground without sculpting every detail everywhere. Here you can see after I've added the concrete wall, I've sculpted around this wall so it looks more integrated in our scene. Then step by step I've added all the different objects like the stones, the ivy. Then I've added the tree in the foreground, but here I don't use the link method. Here I use a pen method so the object will be copied directly into our scene so that I still can edit the object because here I wanted to add some ivy and also this small leaves all over the root of the tree. So here you can see I've added a vertex group and then I use some leaves from my plants file and added it to the tree using a particle system. The tree shows up very near to the camera, so we have additional details, so the tree looks more realistic in our final rendering. Certainly this I won't do for the trees in the background, because these details you won't see in the background. They are reusing this moss texture, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, and then we add the bicycles, the backpacks and the two animated persons. Then I added the insects. Here I've created some emitters. And then you simply can link or append the particle systems from the assets files from your insect blender file. So you simply can select one plane, add a new particle system and under settings you can choose one of the linked or appended particle systems. Also the butterfly was simply grouped including the empty object and then linked into our scene and then I've created the paths here directly in the scene and then I can use the linked objects for the path animation. And here you can see I've added the paths in a way that the butterflies doesn't fly through any objects of the scene. So in this case they fly around the robot tank. So now let's take a look at the plants. For this I've created two new planes which have the shape of the camera view and with this kind of shape we only generate the meadow in the area we actually see in the end. So we don't waste memory. These two planes I have subdivided in edit mode and then using the shrink wrap modifier projected onto the ground. And also you can see I have two different objects, one for the foreground and one for the midground. The background won't have grass in this scene. On the midground we only use a few plants with a lower resolution to save memory. And in the foreground we see many different plants with a higher resolution. And even here we can simply link or append the particle systems of the different plants. And then I can easily add a new particle system and choose one of the particle systems from the settings. And then you maybe can add a vertex group or increase or decrease the number under emission. One important thing we have to consider if you want to simulate the grass you have to do it again here in this scene. So you have to add a wind or a turbulence force field and you have to enable hair dynamics and bake all the dynamics again. In addition to the plants I've added some small stones. That's great because so the ground looks more realistic because of higher details. Maybe you ask yourself why I created this new plane for the meadow. And the reason is when I want to disable the whole meadow at once I don't need to disable all the different particle systems one after another. Instead I can hide the whole plane and the whole meadow is disabled. If you do it in this way you have to consider one important thing. You have to disable in the particle settings under render the emitter checkbox so that in your final scene the emitter won't be rendered. 
When we import the particle systems of the plants, also the single objects of the different plants were added. And I have moved all of these objects to the last lower layer here, where we store all of our temporary objects. And similar to the branches of the trees, I've set the maximum draw type to bounce so that we just have the wireframe cubes inside the asset file of the plants. And also you can see here the, the flies, uh, small stones and so on. So all temporary objects we need for our particle systems I've stored here on this layer. Okay, now let's get back to animation for a short while because the only manual animated thing in our scene is our 3D camera. And it's a very simple animation from point A to B how the camera animation should look like, we already tested in our pre-visualization. So in this case, we know exactly how the camera animation should look like. So we don't need to search for a nice camera perspective. So we want to create this dolly shot where the camera moves slowly onto our persons slash the robot tank. For the animation, I move the pointer to frame 1, select the camera, and with a cursor over the 3D view, I press I, lock road, for inserting a keyframe for position and rotation. Then I go to the last frame of my animation, move the camera to the end position, and then again press I, lock road. Now we have a small problem. Using the standard setting, the animation is interpolated as Bezier. That means the camera starts slowly, gets faster, and then in the end it stops slowly. In this case I want to have a linear movement for the camera. That means the camera moves with the same speed for the whole animation. And for doing this I open up the dope sheet editor, select the keyframes, press T, and here I choose linear. And that's all. So, but if you choose linear, what doesn't work is if you add more than two keyframes, the animation doesn't look smooth anymore. While animating the camera, you also have to consider that in the foreground we have the tall grass. Take care that the camera does not move through the grass, instead animate it in a way that it moves beside or above the grass. Okay, now I show you a very useful add-on. So go to user preferences, add-ons and search for layer manager and enable this add-on. Now you find the layer manager in the tool shelf under the tab layers and you certainly know the 3D layers you find in the header of the 3D view where we can move our objects to organize our scene a bit better. And using this layer manager, you can name these 3D layers so you exactly know what's on the different layers. Also using the eyes, I can enable or disable the layers. Also we can lock all the objects on one layer so we can't select them anymore. Or we can select all objects on one layer using the cursor button here. For example, when I work on the bushes, I can lock all the other layers except the layer with the bushes and if I now click in my scene I just can select the bushes and move them to the right place so nothing else is in my way. In addition we can add layer groups. That means if you want to have a collection of different 3D layers you can add a new layer group with these layers enabled and using the eye you can enable or disable these layers. Yeah, and thinking back while creating this whole scene, this layer manager was very, very useful. Okay, here another tip for smoothly working in our 3D view. As you can remember, all the plants and the branches of the trees we have set to the bounce draw type, so that we have this wireframe cubes. So with this setting we can speed up the viewport navigation. If we take a look at the trees, these are using the subdivision surface modifier. And the problem is, if we link an object into our scene, we can't edit the modifiers anymore. So for example, if I want to decrease the subdivisions from the modifier, I have to go back to my assets file, do the settings there, and then save the file and go back to my main scene. And this is very inconvenient. But there is a more convenient way, because under Scene we have the Simplify option I've already showed you in another video. Here we can set the subdivisions globally for our whole scene. And the great thing, this also works for linked objects. 
and you can see if I decrease the subdivisions for viewport, also the subdivisions for the trees decreases. And so I can decrease the value for the viewport and leave the value on 2 for rendering. So if we hit render, we have still our high resolution trees. And here you can see it also works for the robot because this is also a very high detailed object using the subdivision surface modifier. Okay, here one final thing. Certainly you can remember we have added all the butterflies and insects to our scene. And this adds more life to our scene, so it looks more natural. And also we have added some dust particles. So we simply added a big plane above our scene. It looks a bit like snow in this case. As particle objects we used a very small icosphere and on the icosphere we added a material using the volumetric scatter shader and using the density value you can set up how dense the fog inside the little dust particle should be. And using this volume material it looks like a small dust particle. If we take a look at the particle settings we have 3000 particles. The start frame I've set to negative 2000 because I wanted when the animation starts at frame 1 all of the particles should be all over the scene right from the beginning. In this case you also have to increase the lifetime of the particles so they stay in the scene for the whole animation. We want the particle that they move very very slow and so I have decreased under velocity the normal value to 0.002 so that they are moving very very slowly. And also I wanted that the gravity does not have an effect on the particles and so I've decreased the gravity value under field weights to zero. So that means the particles are moving with its own velocity weightless through the space. Also I've set the Brownian value under physics to one so the particles don't move in a straight direction. Instead they move a little bit shaky like we have used a turbulence force field. Yeah, and you can see with these settings we have some dust particles in our scene and if you use some other settings you also could create snow or rain for your scene. Yeah, and that's a rough summary how we put together the whole scene. All the missing settings like render settings or lighting we will show you in the next videos.